The newest models show not one, but multiple snow chances in the next week and a half. Let's get into the overview. Thank you for joining me in today's video. I want to start today's update with a look at the question of the day, which is, which temperature is better, 30 degrees or 80 degrees Fahrenheit? I think 30 degrees consistently would get old after a while, so if we're talking about year-round, I would definitely say 80 on average would be better for me. What's your take? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know down in the comments below. With the question of the day out of the way, I now want to move on and give you a look at the jet stream flow, or the flow of winds expected across North America, as you go on up into the atmosphere in the coming days. It's worth noting that as we go through this weekend, there is a big dip in the jet stream expected to continue flowing down over parts of the eastern U.S. In fact, it's this little notch you can see heading out of Saturday night into Sunday towards parts of the southern and the eastern corridor. That is a individual little kick or trough in the jet stream that's going to help in fueling up a possible little wintry burst of some weather for parts of the southern and eastern U.S., that kick in the jet stream that could create some wintry weather is what I've especially focused on in my last couple of videos. I'll talk about it some more in this update as snow totals and other details have become a bit clearer for what's coming this weekend. However, this video is also going to take a look further ahead, so I want to show you how the atmospheric pattern is going to flow as we go through time. Heading into the early part of next week, it looks like the jet stream will still be in a big troughing manner over parts of the central and eastern U.S., aka a huge dip in the jet stream bringing down cooler air all the way from the sky down to the surface. As we continue through time through late next week, it looks like the jet stream is going to continue to be dipping down overall, and it looks like there's going to be a fairly strong flow that's going to be moving out of parts of the northern U.S. and then towards the east coast as indicated by this blended guidance. With a strong jet stream flow expected as we go towards the final week to week and a half of January from around the 20th onward, that's certainly a pattern that could involve multiple individual kicks of energy throughout the jet stream. I'll get into more detail about this later in the video, but I'm seeing increasing confidence already in the potential for one or multiple ice slash snowstorms crossing parts of the western, the central, and the eastern U.S. with this type of setup later into the month. Again, I'll get into those details a little bit later on, but let's spend the next few minutes talking about that near-term weekend snow signal that will even impact parts of the southeast U.S. Here we are pivoting over to some blended guidance. I am happy to report that in comparison to my last two videos, guidance has definitely settled in on a more likely solution with the possible winter weather Sunday into Monday, moving into parts of the southern and the eastern U.S. By the way, if you want to skip ahead to the information on what could happen later this month, make sure you're using the timestamps in the description. Let's move on with this part of the update, though, pushing things on the future radar out of Saturday, Saturday night into Sunday. You can see there will be some snow up in parts of the Great Lakes in the northeast around that time. The signal that I've been talking about in previous videos that I'm talking about now, though, it's going to originate down here coming out of the Gulf Coast states and then pushing to the northeast. I'm sad to report that as in general, this blended guidance and other guidance has started to settle in on a solution. It has not necessarily been a solution for snow lovers. You can see that in general, it looks like at some point late Saturday night heading into Sunday morning, some form or fashion of light to moderate rain is going to get going into parts of the southeast U.S., However, with cold air starting to brush up against this as the dip in the jet stream continues to tighten, it does look like there will be some bursts of snow erupting. However, it is not going to be one consolidated winter storm until really a lot of this energy makes its way offshore. That is definitely the most probable solution based on most guidance at this point, at least. You can see using this blended modeling that in some parts of Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Florida, there could be rain transitioning to some brief snow at some point Sunday morning into the early afternoon. The same goes further up the coast, heading towards Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, the Long Island region of New York. It looks like there could be some brief snow out of the system up there, heading through Sunday afternoon into the evening. However, you can see by the time this thing starts to get its act together, that's actually going to be as it moves offshore. And then by the time this makes its way on up towards Atlanta, Canada, it will probably have a stronger flow of snow with it, all interconnected into the low pressure system. Ultimately, there are still some slightly varying solutions. This is the NAM model showing other parts of Georgia and maybe central South Carolina getting a bit more snow than that guidance I just showed to you. We've got the individual GFS model showing a bit of some heavier snow touching the southern New England states and the mid-Atlantic shores by Sunday afternoon and evening. Ultimately, though, the broad consensus that has started to come together on the models is that this is going to be a very thin stripe of snow wherever it does indeed happen. 
And again, the system is not going to bring any kind of major accumulation to any zones based on this current guidance. Something major would have to change for it to do that. With the future radar guidance in mind, let's take a look at the projected snowfall in the 24-hour increment where this system will be relevant. That's going to be from Sunday in the early morning through Monday in the early morning. And you can see from this guidance that overall snow totals are not expected to be impressive. East of this line, that is where the snow totals are in association with that kick in the jet stream that's going to send the moisture right on up the east coast. You can see that in general, stretching from parts of far northern Florida all the way on up to the east coast of Massachusetts, there's this corridor where at least a dusting to a couple inches worth of snow may come down. This is the amount of snow, assuming everything would accumulate, though, in that 24-hour span. And with the ground warm, especially down into parts of the mid-Atlantic and the southeast U.S., how much of this would really stick? That is a very big question. Ultimately, this is probably just going to be a quick hitting burst of snow that maybe briefly accumulates for parts of the southeast U.S., bringing some smiles to snow lovers' faces. For the northeast U.S., this looks like a pretty lackluster event unless something changes. That's all I've got for you in terms of details for this weekend's snow signal. Now let's move on and talk about snow signals for further down the line and the stage that's going to get set for those signals. What I mean by the stage getting set is cold air really locking into place in the pattern over much of the U.S. in the coming days and really over the next week plus. Using this custom graphic I've made, you can see that behind that dip in the jet stream as it moves off the east coast this weekend, temperatures are going to be very frigid. Moving out of the central U.S. into the Mississippi Valley corridor and then over to the east coast, temperatures look like they will be upwards of 20 to 30 degrees below average as we head out of Saturday, Saturday night, and into Sunday. With the wind, that means it is going to feel very cold, and those cold wind chills and cold temperatures in general will continue heading into the early part of next week and beyond. You can see that from the plains to the east coast, even down to Florida, temperatures are going to be well below normal for this time of the year, heading into January 19th through the 20th. And again, as I've been mentioning, the colder air is just going to persist even beyond this point. Now that you know the stage is going to be generally set, and as I showed earlier in the video, the jet stream is going to continue to dip down as we go further into January, let's take a look at where snow signals are popping up on the long-range guidance at this point. As of the time I'm recording this video late on Friday, January 16th, the first longer-range signal showing up on some of this blended future radar guidance begins popping up around the January 22nd time frame. That's indicated by greens indicating rainfall possibly in parts of the south, and you can also see these blues into parts of the northern corridor. Now, just because you see a blue in Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, you get it, for January 23rd, that doesn't mean all of those zones will be getting snow at that time. What that indicates is there's a signal on this guidance, basically multiple models that come into this average product you're seeing on screen are showing snow somewhere in that zone and then rain is somewhere in this zone possibly down here around that time there's a signal and look at the signals only continuing to grow seemingly on this guidance heading deeper into january the 24th the 25th the 26th it looks like southern zones are going to be active with a chance for some cold rain or maybe some brief snow or ice mixing in and then zones further north are going to have a chance for some snowfall possibly in multiple winter storms starting around the 21st 22nd then at least going through this time frame around the 25th Let's use some other blended guidance to get a different perspective on when there might be some new snowstorms showing up in the pattern on the larger scale. This graphic is going to indicate 24-hour percent chances of snow from a blended guidance product, basically multiple models coming together and the most likely areas for snowfall being mapped out as a result. You can see that heading towards, here we go, the 21st into the 22nd, and then especially the 23rd, that's when the first signal shows up on this blended guidance. Considering this is a long-range signal, about five to seven days away from the time I'm recording this video, having upwards of a 30 to 40% chance of accumulating snow showing up on this guidance, that's a pretty decent signal stretching out of the Midwest into the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. If you're not included on that signal, you can see that a slightly longer-range signal shows up around the 25th and the 26th on this guidance with at least a 10 to 20 plus percent chance, which is pretty good for the long range, showing up in a corridor that extends from parts of the north central U.S. over to the northeastern coast. Ultimately, the point in the guidance that I just showed over the last few minutes is not to guarantee an individual snow event, but it is to show you that there are defined snow signals already showing up on multiple pieces of a long range guidance, whether that's from future radars or percent chances like what we're looking at here. That means it would be best to Keep an eye to the sky as we go into the future, because things could get interesting over a broad zone to finish January. 
With that being said, that's about all I have for you in this update. Let's get into the headlines recap of what I just discussed. Of course, the main thing I just talked about throughout this video, multiple snow signals are in sight. That goes from this weekend all the way through the end of January. Cold air will lock into place behind this weekend's weird southeastern and east coast snow chance. That's going to set the stage for January 20th to 21st, especially through the 27th, which looks to be the next window of opportunity for more impactful and possibly large-scale winter storms. Again, the whole idea with showing the longer range pattern was not to get you set on a specific snow day that's going to happen. It was to show you a period of time where models are generally showing some higher chances, especially for this far out, for possible snow. If you want more consistent and accurate updates as we go towards those longer range snow signals and beyond, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you catch more updates from me right here. By the way, if you enjoyed the weather models I used in this video, I access all of them on a site called Weather Bell. I'll give you the free trial link to Weather Bell that is down in the description of this video. That's all I've got in terms of reminders, though. Thank you so much for tuning in to this update. I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to answer that question of the day. All right, that's all I got. God bless you. Have a good one.